So you wanna learn how to create this crazy distort transition in After Effects? It's really easy to require Sapphire, but before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know that I am lurking visuals and I run the Stay Creative store. And right now we just dropped two crazy packs. And for the launch of these packs, we're having a huge buy one get one free sale. So if you add any of the new packs to your cart, you can grab any other pack from the store for completely free. So make sure to go and check the link in the description before we get into it, but let's get right into the tutorial. It looks feels weird having this face cam here. I don't know if I put it up right. Let me know if it's good, but I think it is. So as you can see, I'm in After Effects and I got these two clips right here. And I want my transition to be right in between them. So what I'll start off by doing is adding an adjustment layer. So just right click, go to new and create a new adjustment layer. And to this adjustment layer, I'll add all of the effects on. But you can do this in a few different ways. First off, I'll show off the easy way, which is by opening up animation presets and go under user presets. And right here in my ultimate VFX kit. And right up here, I got this best distort transition. And all I simply got to do is just drag it on. And then just press U on my keyboard so I can see all of my keyframes. And then all I gotta do is just move these keyframes so that they lined up correctly, like this. And now if I play through, I got the transition right here. And it was pretty easy to make and you can mess with the keyframes as well. If you want a shorter transition, you just select all of your keyframes and just drag them in. You can have something like this. So you can basically customize it to your liking. And I'll have the Ultimate VFX kit linked in the description so you can grab it for yourself. But if you don't have this preset pack, then I'll still break down this effect. But you'll miss out on the like 50 other presets that I got in here. So I'll remove all of the effects. And the first effect that I'll add on is a turbulent displays. And right here, I'll turn it down to zero. And I'll keyframe the amount. And I'll keyframe the size and the evolution as well. And then I'll go right up to the transition right here where the clip cuts. And then I'll turn up the amount to 300 as well as the size to 300 and then we can just drag up the evolution to like 200 or something like this i turned it up to 130 just like this and then i can go to the end of the second clip and right here i'll turn down the amount back to zero and the evolution up to like 220 just like that and now we got this going on which isn't a smooth transition at all but let's press U on our keyboard. So now we can see all of our keyframes. We can also turn down the size to 100 as well back here. I forgot to say that. And I'll move in my keyframes right there. So I can have a shorter transition. But I'll easy ease all of my keyframes pressing F9. And we can mess with the graph editor in a bit. But now I'll add on a distort chroma from Sapphire. And this one I'll turn down to 0 right here. And keyframe the amount. And then we'll go in right here to the transition. And turn it up to 1.5. And then we can turn up the blur lens to 300. But I won't be keyframing the blur lens. I'll keep it like this. And then go to the end and turn it down to zero. We can also keyframe the rotate warp direction as well. So go back here, keyframe it at zero. Right here at the beginning, I'll turn it up to 230. And then I'll go to the end and turn it down to 83. And I'll easy ease my keyframes once again. And now we got this. You can see that the transition is starting to come together, but it's still missing some parts, which we'll be adding on right now. And the next effect is your preferred glow. I'll go for a deep glow, but you can go for a sapphire glow or just a built-in glow in After Effects. And once again, turn it down to zero here at the beginning, keyframe the exposure, and I'll turn up the threshold to like 70 and the radius to 350. Then go to the cut of the clips right here. Then I'll turn up the exposure to like 120 like this and then turn it back to zero once again i'll easy ease my keyframes and now we got this it's a little bit too low so i can turn up the exposure a little bit more to like 1.5 and then i'll add on a chromatic aberration effect and you can use the universe one or the built-in one in after effects i'll go for the built-in one just for the sake of this tutorial so i can break everything down a little bit better and right here in the middle of the transition i'll keyframe all of the aberrations and the fall off distance and here for the beginning i'll turn everything down to zero and here at the end i'll do the same and here at the beginning i'll also turn down the fall off distance to zero and here at the peak i'll turn up the fall off distance to 100 and at the end everything will be turned down to zero so now we can easy ease all of the keyframes and we can also add on a hue saturation effect just to mess with the colors a little bit during the transition and i'll drag this effect above my glow right there and then I'll keyframe the channel range and then right here at the beginning and then here at the end I'll have it turned up to 1. So it basically does a full flip just like that. And now we'll be messing a lot with the graph editor to make this look a little bit smoother. But basically what we'll be doing, I'll select the first keyframes right here. You can use the speed graph if you feel like it but I'm going to go for the valley graph and I'll create something like this. 
so it goes a little bit slower here in the beginning and then right here when the transition hits it's supposed to go a little bit faster just like this and i'll basically do the exact same thing for all of the effects and after basically doing that to all of my effects i got this which looks cool and i'm happy with that we can also turn on motion blur to make it a little bit smoother and that looks good but if you want to make it a little bit more smooth then you can add on a new adjustment layer and you can drag on an rsmb effect which is a plugin but it's really useful and this basically adds on another motion blur to make it a little bit more smooth but i'll turn down the blur amount to like 0.2 and we can keep the motion sensitivity at 50 because you don't need to keep high numbers on the RSMB. Now when I play through, it should be a little bit smoother. So boom, there you have the effect. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And feel free to go and grab the Ultimate VFX kit linked in the description to instantly level up your edits and also support me as a creator. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.